talk about serpentines and some of the things that happen with uh, serpentines with dogs, how dogs think, and then some of the training that is required in order to um, get some of the behaviors that we want for the serpentine. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you what a serpentine uh, looks like. <laughs> Uh, if we're coming from uh, this direction, so we're going this direction, a uh, dog comes over this jump, back onto the middle jump, and then jumps, uh, the red jump and the yellow jump are performed in the same direction. So the serpentine looks like a snake. The serpentine always has three Obstacles usually jumps, but not always. Uh, so having them come through this jump in, in this direction, second jump is in that direction, third jump is back in the same direction as jump number one. So teaching our dogs, we're doing multiple things when we're teaching a serpentine line, and I would highly encourage you to train for it because you will see it in almost every organization um, and it's a really popular um, sequence that, that judges um, have a tendency to do. So you'll definitely see it um, on the course if you compete. And when we're training for serpentine lines, the middle jump, if we run, we can run the serpentine on either side. Right? But if we're coming from this direction, if we run on this side of the three jumps, this jump here is the one that takes the most training for dogs. Um, so they are converging on your line. They're coming towards you on their line and then having to go out. If you train this enough, the dogs will get a natural feel for what this feels like. But this trained converging in on you is the hardest part for most dogs. And so there's a few different ways that you can train it. Um, but teaching the dog that they can converge is um, quite important. So I like to start out with, I do what's called offset, offset serpentine. So an offset serpentine is taking our jumps and angling them just slightly to help the dog be able to see the line a little bit better. As they come over this red jump, they're almost faced with uh, the next jump. And so converging in on you isn't quite as tough. But here's where the serpentine um, can get a little sideways for people if they don't understand how dogs work and they don't understand how serpentine lines can work. So if I'm running this serpentine line on this side and I want my dog to take this yellow jump and come this direction, then this turn right here, coming off this white jump and going back onto the yellow jump, this little turn right here is called a push turn. And in order for me to get this push with minimal training, so the dog is still learning this, the push requires me to be in front of my dog. And so when we're doing that, we are setting, coming from this direction, um, we are setting the first jump and we're traveling down, letting them converge on us, trying to be in front of them to then push them back onto uh, the last jump. And I can offset this one as well if I wanted to make that easier for the dog. But what happens is when, I'm gonna use the bar here, is when we're setting, when we're setting for this jump, we're taking the line here to this push turn. And what happens is when I'm here, this is where I want to be when my dog is about to lift. So when my dog is here, I want to be looking back over my shoulder, inviting them in to create the, the push. And what happens is when I grab this line, so I set them here and I start moving, what the dog does, or what the dog does in early training without training, is they'll take this jump line and 
Yes, 